Hey, I just want to make a quick video here to update everyone on the status of H.R. 38. And for those of you that aren't familiar, H.R. 38 is the House bill regarding national reciprocity, saying if you have a concealed carry license in your state and you travel somewhere temporarily as a tourist or just passing through or whatever, if you have that license from your state, you can still exercise your right to carry for self-defense in every other state also. It's just, like I said, national reciprocity for those of who didn't understand what reciprocity is. Well, I watched the whole hearing today, and it was, at the same time, incredibly boring and infuriating. It's hard to believe that those two things can go hand in hand, but it was. Some of the ridiculous stuff said, some of the stuff that was tried to be put in as an amendment was kind of aggravating, to say the least. Uh, it was mostly the Democrats. There were a couple of times the Republicans irritated me, like when one of the Republicans King was trying to put in an amendment that says that as if you're a member of Congress, you can carry in all 50 states no matter what. Whether you have a permit in your state or not, if your state doesn't issue a permit even, you can still carry in all 50 states because you're a member of Congress, you're special. Which goes to show that even the pro-gun politicians are still elitists. They think they're special. That kind of aggravated me. But that I was willing to overlook because it's not that big of a thing. doesn't really take any rights away from us. just gives them special rights, which I don't agree with. Uh, then there were a bunch of other craps. <laughs> there was a bunch of other stuff said that was just ridiculous. Like, there's this one frizzy-headed guy from Maryland. I forget his last name. But like Rakin or something. But uh, he would kept arguing that we're violating states' rights. It's funny how Democrats are only pro-state right when it's them taking rights away from citizens in their state or people from other states that visit their state. They're very seldomly pro-state rights when it's something they don't agree with or when it's granting freedom to individuals in a different state or their state. He's arguing, this just completely tramples it, blah, 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 it just takes away the rights of states. Well, the states don't have the right to violate the Constitution. No state has that right. And he kept trying to muddy the waters by comparing it to other things like, well, if someone can smoke marijuana in one state, then they'd have to be able to smoke marijuana in every state. Well, no, that's not the same thing. It's not a fair comparison. One's a constitutional right. Uh, one is a law that's been passed in your state by referendum or by voters, etc. It's not something that's a constitutional guarantee. The Second Amendment is a constitutional guarantee. So, not comparable. So they kept trying to muddy you the waters that way, and they kept trying to change like the title of the bill to the National Trample on State Rights Bill or something like that. Uh, and this one lady, this Jackson Lee lady, actually said one thing that kind of confused me, and I got to go back and find it on the tape because she said that well, she was talking about hate crimes and domestic violence. Well, there was, and also there was a lot of people in this that are Democrats that wanted to take away your right to carry because you committed a misdemeanor in a state where they think that you shouldn't be allowed to carry if you have a misdemeanor. So they were totally trying to rewrite the federal law about felonies and carrying, uh, to which uh, Representative King said, hey, if you all feel that strongly about these misdemeanors in your states, make them felonies. But we're never going to see that happen because no one's going to go for making such a minor charge felonies. But uh, this lady, Jackson Lee, she said one thing that really puzzled me. She said that when she was talking about domestic violence and hate crime, she's like, we all know that when someone is involved uh, uh, in domestic violence and they own a handgun, that 500% of the time it ends in homicide, which I was like, how is that even statistically possible? Uh, for one, there's nothing greater than 100%. <laughs> and and I'm pretty sure that every person that ever gets a domestic violent charge doesn't commit murder. Uh, so I'm not, I don't, I'm, what? <laughs> Just like someone needs to contact her and be like, uh, what? Uh, then she kept reading all these letters from police chiefs like, these are people that have paid their dues in law enforcement and they don't want these people to be able to carry guns. Uh, and I'm like, uh, police chiefs are appointed. They're not elected officials. And, and they say whatever the state officials that appoint them tell them to say. So that's basically the government saying they don't want us to have guns. So that carries no weight. You just love to say police chief because it makes it sound like the average police officer or the sheriff. That's not true. It's chief of police that say that. Uh, so, but long story short, it uh, passed. It actually made it through committee. It will be voted on in the House. So thumbs up for that. We've actually taken a big step here towards something that I think is very important. A lot of people might think national reciprocity is not that big a deal because they don't go anywhere. But it's a big deal to everyone, even if you don't go anywhere, because 
states like California and New York, if they have to start allowing people from other states to carry in their state and those people aren't committing crimes, it's going to be hard for them to keep selling their own populations on the fact that we have to disarm you to prevent crime. They're going to start saying, hey, why can these people defend themselves? And hey, these people aren't committing crime, so why can't I be trusted with a gun? So I think national reciprocity is a, is a first step towards crumbling anti-gun laws pretty much everywhere in this country. So I'm a big supporter of it. So we got it through committee today, but you still need to call your representatives. Call your representatives, let them know, vote yes on H.R. 38. Uh, also, start calling your senators because it's going to go to the Senate next if it passes the House. So hammer those uh, uh, congressmen and also hammer those senators. Hammer, hammer your representatives and your senators because we want to get this passed because, like I said, it's very important. It's right up there with the Heller decision as, as far as an incremental step in destroying anti-gun laws in this country and restoring the freedoms granted to us by the Second Amendment. So get on those phones. Start writing letters. Let's not th let this rest for a second. Let's get H.R. 38 passed.